each other. My name is Jamie and today we're going to be talking about the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro as well as the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I think that's how it goes. But anyway, we're going to be talking about these two devices here that I have in front of me. And if you are wondering which one you should get, whether it's a 13 inch, 14 inch, which chip, uh, which size storage, hopefully this video will help you out. But just know if you're asking yourself, which one do I want versus which one do I need? Those are two very different questions. And I'm going to say it right at the start of the video, just go with the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro because even one year later, the M1 delivers unbelievable performance and this design that was introduced, I want to say about five years ago it's still absolutely stunning and absolutely timeless and better yet the m1 macbook air is still pretty damn amazing as well and if you are a student and you could take advantage of that student discount or you could just start shopping through the refurbished section because the quality of those machines are still really good now this is not a comparison video of the m1 macbook air but it does have that wedge design that I particularly prefer. You are gonna lose the one cooling fan because it has absolutely no fans found in that device. You'll lose the touch bar, which has been discontinued anyway in a slightly dimmer display. Now, if you could live without some of those features, it does come in this 13 inch size. You pretty much do get the same amount of performance out of the machine, even without the one cooling fan at that better and lower price tag. But you should be fine as long as you're not storing large video files and you're just storing documents and even large megapixel photos, you should be okay with 256 gigabytes of internal storage. But if you are looking to make an upgrade, that is where I would start and not necessarily in the performance of the chip. And then we have the the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and it absolutely doubles everything from its 13 inch predecessor. So it has doubled the unified memory at its base configuration, as well as double the SSD storage. Now, again, I can't say this enough. If you're wondering if you need that much power and performance, chances are you probably don't but you probably do need double the storage. So that again is where you might wanna be a little more flexible. But what really makes this guy truly special, aside from its performance, cause yeah, it's twice as powerful, what makes it super special in my eyes is that screen. Cause it also doubles absolutely everything. It doubles the screen brightness as well as the refresh rate. So you have 500 nits of brightness versus 1000 nits of brightness. And then you have 60 Hertz of refresh rate. And then you have 120 Hertz of refresh rates. And that's where I really think you notice a lot of the differences between the two machines, not necessarily the performance, unless you're really digging, 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 deep into it. And now screens are really a huge factor on why I upgrade my devices, whether it's my phone, my computer, my laptop, and the 14 inch does not disappoint. That bright screen, those slimmer bezels, that fresh refresh rate for scrolling and watching content is absolutely stunning. So yeah, this screen really is no joke. So much so that I find myself removing that liquid retina XDR display settings, especially in the evening, because it does get really bright. So I just dumb it down to 500 nits of brightness. I prefer that over uh, sliding the little dimmer bar and just making the whole screen darker. I just prefer to remove some of the internal brightness from the display, especially if I'm just viewing personal content. And now, of course, both trackpads are absolutely amazing. And it did take me a little getting used to the 14 inches keyboard. I did find I had a little bit more of a press, but maybe the keys just needed to get a little breaking in because now they feel absolutely identical because they are technically they do have the same keyboard aside from the all black tray found in the 14 inch and the aluminum silver tray found on the 13 inch. But where things are truly different as far as the keyboard goes is the touch bar versus the function keys. And I know this was a debate for oh so long and I understand that there's individuals that really need the function keys to be more productive on a pro device. So I totally get that. But I am one of those that do find myself missing that touch bar oh so very much, whether it's from the easy scrolling to find emojis, the autofill features, or the suggested words and autocorrects that you would find on the touch bar. I absolutely miss that. And it was truly a lifesaver and really increased my productivity when it came to typing. And okay, I guess a lot of my typing occurs on iMessage, but still, I really think they could have squeezed in both a touch bar and function keys in these new MacBooks. And that would have just made everyone happy in the end. 
Now the speaker and the camera is noticeably better on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, but I don't think people upgrade for those reasons alone. It does have a 1080p high definition webcam, but if you are coming from an older MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, different Mac, different computer altogether, I think you'll be happy with the improvements they've made over the M1 MacBook Pro compared to when it had the Intel chip. Now the ports. Yes, this guy comes with ports and it did reintroduce MagSafe, which a lot of people love. But I personally just like to use the one cord to charge and roll them all. And that is USB-C. So I like to charge my iPad, my MacBook, all these other gadgets and devices that use USB-C for charging. I just like using the one to charge them all. Now, the only thing I did wish that 13 inch had, I had no problem living that USB-C life, that Donna life, it was all good, it worked, right? But the only thing that I did not enjoy doing was not having a USB-C port on the right side. So I had to run a cord along the table and that could get annoying a little bit, especially if you're in an unknown setting, like a coffee shop or things like that. So even if they were just gonna keep the two ports, I wish it was one on the left and one on the right. But the 14 inch does have two on the left, one on the right, so that works conveniently fine. And to be honest, aside from these demos on these videos, I have yet to even use MagSafe. And then aside from MagSafe and USB-C ports, you'll also find an HDMI port on the 14 inch device. Now that's another port I've, I've, I've never used to date. And prior to owning this device, I also never really used SSD because these cameras that I use don't use SSDs. But recently I did upgrade my mic situation here. So that does use an SSD. So I get to take advantage of that SSD slot. Now, would have been a deal breaker if it didn't have it? No, but living without it. Just plug it in somewhere else and upload and you're done. But now where the 13 inch does have a leg up over the 14 inch, and now I do not know why, but I do know that it's true based off my use case scenario, my use case situations, and it's battery life. The battery life is significantly better in my opinion and in my usage on the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro compared to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the computer is using up more power. Is it the chip? Is it the screen? Is it this liquid Retina XDR display? that uses all this brightness so it needs more battery consumption? Or is it that it has two cooling fans versus the one? Again, I do not know, but I do definitely know that I get longer battery life off of this smaller machine. And now speaking of the smaller, let's talk about the form factor of both devices. And now, although the 14 inch feels so durable and sturdy, the sleekness of the 13 inch is still pretty awesome for on the go. And I can't put my finger on it, and I can't find anything concrete on the Apple site, but the 13 inch feels more aluminum than the 14 inch. It's not plastic, but it doesn't give you that cool metal feel that the 13 inch does. Now, whatever materials they did end up using might be to help reduce the conduction of heat over long periods of use. Now, speaking of heat, the 14 inch does manage to produce significantly more heat than the 13 inch. And no, I'm not talking about Intel heat, but you can still feel it and it does get pretty warm. Fans, pretty quiet on both machines. Uh, I have heard it on the 14 inch, but to date, still haven't even heard it on the 13 inch. Now, all in all, like I said in the very beginning of this video, if you're unsure, the 13 inch is enough. Heck, the 13 inch MacBook Air will give you enough power performance. The only thing that I do suggest you maybe consider increasing is the SSD internal storage because you can change that later no matter what. And now if you are curious of what it would cost to spec a 13 inch close enough to an M1 Pro because you like the design of 13 inch with the touch bar, the lack of the notch or whatever the reason, it'll cost you around $16.99. Now this one here specifically does have the 16 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of storage. And now if it was not for that liquid retina XDR with ProMotion display, I would not have upgraded because I don't need that power. I don't need that performance. I don't need the ports, but I really do like a nice crisp screen. But if you're not on a budget and you do enjoy bright ass screens, chances are you already have the 14 inch or 16 inch in your shopping cart, in the mail, or already on your desk. And there you have it. Those are my thoughts, my opinions, my perspective on the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, as well as the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And I'm, I, I, I gotta tell you, I am quite proud that I have not messed it up and I'm able to say it all in one sentence. 
but thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Do consider liking, subscribing if you haven't, drop a comment down below, and until next time, I'll see ya. Ha <laughs> ha.